talking about. I mean, this, it, and just to bring it down to this level of like, you know, g- two guys in a garage, which we are, and I'm sure a lot of people in this room are, you know, to even at this point to find 30 great engineers or good, you know, for me to get those 30 interviews, that's, that's, that might take me, I mean, I've done this. It might, it, it probably took me four months to talk to 30 engineers or something. I mean, that, that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's yeah. fast or slow. I'm just throwing out a number. Yeah. But like, so if I meet an engineer who's, seems pretty competent and I'm startup of one or two guys. I mean, you tell me, shouldn't I just be like, I got to just hire this guy, like make the interview process easy. Let's get this, you know, let's get this going or, well, I mean, but I think there's a lot of considerations when you're under 10 people. So, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, you always want to get the best engineer. Okay. It's easy for me to stand up here and go, I'll oh, make them really hard. Like let's go back to data structures one one and, you know, see how strong that they're actually there. Um, but there are also other nuances that the, that you have to make too around culture. I mean, you yeah. know, as a percentage, when you're two people, I mean, every person is such a large percentage, and I would argue that most cultures and companies are set after probably the tenth employee, huh. uh, and then you can maybe very slightly change those. But it, you know, for the most part, like the the you're you're pretty set in terms of is this an engineering centric company or design centric or product like where you sit, kind of in that area of gravity. So you think you have to be thoughtful uh, about that. So I'm not. It's not a comment saying lower your bar, but I think you have to think about like who you're hiring for. So I'll give you an example. So, you know, you can find, I think, great self-taught computer scientists that maybe are not far along in their career, but are so ambitious, are willing to sacrifice so much to go yeah. help you get your company going. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they didn't do the best on, you know, the bubble sort problem or whatever, but like, you know, you're willing to take that bet. And I think you have to, ha- it's, I think you have to have a balance and you have to be pragmatic about it too. Yeah. Or maybe they didn't go to Stanford. They didn't get a CS degree from Stanford. I think that's fine. Yeah. You know, I think there's (laughs) there's plenty of great smart people that did not go to CS at Stanford. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, So I I finally, I convinced this guy to join me. Hallelujah. Angels are singing. Mm -hmm. How do I keep this guy engaged? How do I get him? He's, he's still getting all these meetings for coffee or people that are trying to hit him up every single day. Make sure he's really uh, busy with I work. <laughs> <laughs> Just load him like, full of work. We're, we're, we're in like a free agency. Harder. Right? I mean, no, no, no. I mean, but look, I mean, you know, there are a lot of opportunities and yeah. I think it puts a lot of onus and, and challenge on the people in this room to create an environment where people want to go work with you on the journey and exploration that you're on. You know, I think a lot of, I mean, speaking for myself, like I look back at composite, you asked me like, you know, what do I look back in that, that, those fond memories? Like it's the journey, right? It wasn't like there was some end game of like, oh, when we hit this point, like we're done. Awesome. You know, and I think that's, and it's hard and there's times where there's ups and there's downs and many of you probably seen this. I think that's why people end, ultimately go up and, and end up and stay. And, you know, one of the challenges when you, you get that like first employee and you start growing and that pond is, is gross, right? So they're used to being a big fish in a small pond. The pond's growing. They're like, wait a second, I'm a small fish. That's a tough time for a company to go through. And I saw, you know, probably during my time at Twitter, I saw it maybe like six times. Because <laughs> mm. there's like these funny different wow. step functions where, where companies go through where it's just kind of this compression or expansion where you go, oh, like this is awkward. And, you know, because a lot of times at the early part of, uh, of a company's history, you're hiring a lot of generalists because you just kind of need everyone to do everything and then you end up with typically more specialists over time not always but but in certain domains certainly yeah um talk to us a little bit about aqua hires is that something in terms of your experience is that you know with all the aqua hires you've been a part of or the people that you've seen over these mm-hmm. you know these companies you've been a part of what is your what is your takeaway is it a good decision to do that is it better to just bring people in and from train a, them from a company or a, a the culture company well i mean so we retention. certainly did a number of these at twitter um and i think they can work as long as the the team's really small and ideally that that the team physically co-locates wherever the mothership is yeah um and small being how big what, what do you probably mean by five small? or less okay honestly. uh i think you can maybe stretch it to seven but it, it just gets hard uh and it just just because the to get that group assimilated into the other culture um, and you kind of have to, over time, slowly tease that group of five apart because you really want them a part of the collective larger team yep. than that, that smaller team. Um, I'm sure that if you talk to a number of those aqua hires, there'd be a certain set of companies that was a complete disaster. 
and there's another set that said, hey, it was, it was awesome. And, you know, it's there's not a, a magic. I think one of the things from the acquirer side that we oftentimes look at is, you know, what's what's the motivation between the, behind the people that are in the company? Like, why are they there? Um, is it Are they really deep and focused on building this one product? I mean, the worst thing is when someone tells you what they want to hear, like, yes, I really do want to go work on that product, but I secretly want to finish this other one over here that I didn't finish at my startup that didn't work out, mm. right? And that, you know, that can happen, and that's something that is important, I think, for both sides that really sets out because that usually that will never end, a, end up well.